Hello, everyone. Great to be here. So great to be here with you. So um, are we getting uh, the, the, the screen? There we go. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you a quick question. And, uh, and I want you to shout out, no need for the microphone. I just want to kind of hear it. If you think about it, what are some things that our community wants and needs? Money. <laughs> what else? Clean air. Clean air. We want to make the world better, right? We want less indoctrination. We want less superstition, right? We want more atheist voters, the right kind of atheist, right? And the secular Buddhist Refor reformation is that opportunity for us as well. We have an opportunity to change an entire religion from within. And when we change a religion from within, we dispel indoctrination and superstition, and we change voting patterns, and we add new members. So how many of you have heard people say stuff like, oh, you know, my family's been Christian forever. I was born Christian, I'm gonna die Christian. I, I was born Muslim, I'm gonna die Muslim. I was born Hindu, I'm gonna die Hindu, stuff like that, right? We've all heard that. So how did our ancestors choose that religion? Is religion the product of geographical indoctrination? I mean, if you think about it, if you go to the Middle East, most of the people in the Middle East are Muslim, the majority. If you go to South America, North America, most of the people are Christian. If you go to India, most of the people are Hindu. How does that happen? Could that be because of conquest, actual military conquest of the past that subdued our ancestors? Could it have been colonization, isolation? Well, the world's opening up. And you know what? If our ancestors here in the Americas were Muslim, we would probably be concerned with Islam right now, and we would probably, most of the people that you know would probably be Muslim, right? On the other hand, some people only believe in information that they can test and corroborate with falsifiable, testifiable, replicable evidence that they consider, and they consider any extraordinary claim as an assumption, right? Some people actually examine their religious beliefs. I congratulate you, you guys have all done that, right? And Buddhists are no exception. Buddhists are supposed to seek the truth. That's in the scriptures. Buddhists are supposed to know for themselves that something is true. They're supposed to seek true happiness. And we call Buddhists who disagree with traditional Buddhism, secular Buddhists, because they are atheists. They're secular, they don't believe in gods. They don't believe in gurus. They don't believe in the supernatural. Their beliefs are based in science, reason, and they are secular humanists. So common reasons, common reasons why traditional Buddhists might not agree with, with Buddhism, right? With traditional Buddhism. Well, traditional Buddhism is very animistic. They believe in spirits and gods with a small g and ghosts. And they generally, and this is, this is true in act and in verse, they do believe that men are superior to women. And the monks in Buddhism tend to be revered above everyone else. And they believe in rebirth and karma. And they often encourage devotion and faith and dogma. So is traditional Buddhism a religion? I mean, we all, a lot of people here love traditional Buddhism, or maybe not here, but people generally love traditional Buddhism, right? So what, what does religion mean anyway? Because we get bombarded with so many definitions. The definition that I think fits best is, is religion is any organized system of beliefs about the cause and nature and purpose of existence whose core concepts depend on a belief in the supernatural. So is football a religion under that definition? I mean, just because someone is passionate about something or ritualistic about something doesn't mean that's a religion. And we have to be careful with that because definitions, I mean, look at the religious folks. They try to say science is a religion. Right? Well, as long as that supernatural element is missing, it's not a religion. And we have to stick to this definition, otherwise they're going to try to, you know, do what they do. 
So is secular Buddhism a religion? Well, secular Buddhism has no belief in the supernatural, zero. No belief in gods, zero. No reliance on gurus. Now, why use the term secular Buddhism? Why not just use some other term? Because this is already what it's called. It's already started, it's already, the movement started. It's what it's called, that's its name right now, until it changes. And let's find a better name, I'm cool with that, but right now that's its name. And it also gives credit where it's due. And the most important thing is it gives our community, it gives atheism a rightful leverage to reform superstition, to change an entire religion, the fourth largest religion from within. And why self-identify as a Buddhist anyway? And is Buddhism the same as uh, humanism? And who was the Buddha? So any person can rightfully self-identify themselves as a secular Buddhist if they utilize, subscribe to, or are informed by secular Buddhist meditation or and Buddhist ethics and or Buddhist philosophy. So where does secular Buddhism fall within all the other things and secular humanism and stuff like that? Well, let's, let's, let's look at the definitions real quick, right? So atheism is a lack of belief in gods, right? And I do think that we should all carry the atheist banner. I totally agree with David Silverman. You know, we should carry that banner. That We are all atheists. That's what brings us together, right? What's a secular humanist? Well, it's, a, it's an atheist who strives to live an ethical uh, and personal, uh, personally fulfilling life for the greater good of humanity, right? So secular Buddhists are also secular humanists. But secular Buddhists do one more thing. They also practice some sort of Buddhist meditation in a secular way, or Buddhist ethics, or Buddhist philosophy, right? Now, secular Buddhists don't worship the Buddha. The Buddha was just a guy. He lived a privileged life in India 2,500 years ago. That part of India is now Nepal. He left his privileged life, developed a meditation technique, techniques actually, and now those techniques are confirmed effective by neuroscience. And one of the first document, he, he may actually be one of the first documented humanists and, and atheists in history. So what was the Buddha all about, right? What was the primary directive? What, what was the core of what he was really teaching and saying and stuff like that? I mean, if you take it down to its most simple, what he said was, don't worship gods. That's what we want to hear, right? Don't worship gods. Meditate. Learn some sort of system that gives you power from within so you don't have to depend on outside stuff. And secular Buddhism is a return to that. And what was that like 2,500 years ago? We think we have it tough now. Think about 2,500 years ago. Paganism, God worship was everywhere. I mean, we're talking about ancient Rome, ancient Greece, ancient Egypt, right? Ancient Asia and ancient India. And you had temples and you had priests. And those temples and those priests said, worship gods. And the Buddha was like, don't worship gods. So what do you think? You know, he, he basically had an interesting time. So eventually, he, and he started to win the war against that, that BS, right? Eventually, what happened? Eventually, the religion started to lose, and they were freaking out. So they decided, you know what? Let's make Buddha a god. We'll put him in our own pantheon. We'll put him in, a, in our church or temple, right? And then we'll tell people to come on back to our temple. And you can worship the Buddha through us again as a god now, right? The other thing that's interesting that happened to, to Buddhism 2,500 years ago and from then on is as it started to spread around the world, everywhere that Buddhism went, it took on the culture and, and, and kind of taste and feel of that society. So basically when Buddhism went to Tibet, it met the religion of Tibet, which originally was called Bon, and they mixed. So this is why Tibetan Buddhism looks so different from Sri Lankan Buddhism, from Burmese Buddhism and Thai Buddhism and so on and so forth. Now the point of this is that 2,500 years later, when Buddhism came to the West, to America, it mixed with our culture and our skepticism and our atheism, and now we have secular Buddhism. So secular Buddhism is not a new thing, it's just what Buddhism has always done. It's changed with the culture and the knowledge of the people who have embraced some of the philosophies and ethics and practices, right? 
because we are supposed to follow the truth. And that's a, a major tenet in Buddhism, right? So last count, there, in 2010, there are 500 million Buddhists in the world, 7% of the world population, fourth largest religion. And so in a nutshell, what is secular Buddhism? It's traditional Buddhism minus, minus the gods, the gurus, the pseudoscience, and the supernatural. It only utilizes beliefs and practices that are consistent with and corroborated by reason and science. But it differs for each person how you practice it. Because some people will be more into the meditation. Some people will be more into the ethics. Some people will be more into the philosophy. Some people will do all three. But all you do have to do is just one. So secular Buddhists do one of those three things. Either the meditation or and or the philosophy and or the ethics. Why is the meditation so important though? You know, why, why is it that you know, ex-Muslims, ex-Jews a lot of times kind of let go, but especially ex-Muslims or ex-Christians, they just let go of the whole thing, right? A lot of us leaving Christianity just let go of everything. Because you know, it's kind of hard when a, when a religion is based on a supernatural being, when you leave it, there's really not that much left, you know? But Buddhism teaches meditation and meditation does help one's life. I mean, bad things happen in life. Changes happen in life. If we don't have some sort of internal system that's not based on r ridiculous beliefs, then we're kind of, you know, who do we turn to? So some of the personal benefits of meditation is it curbs stress, makes people feel inwardly strong and empowered, helps people feel more compassionate. And for the longest time, that's all meditation really was. So, so a lot of you who learned about meditation 10, 20, 30 years ago, you're kind of like, ah, meditation, that's all BS. You know, yeah, curb stress, whatever. You know, I play golf, right? Or whatever. But lately, neuroscience has been showing other benefits of meditation. So there's, now there's more work being done on it. It's being tested every day. So based on many studies, we know now through science that it does decrease stress. It does decrease depression, dissatisfaction, helps change unproductive mental patterns helps anxiety and addictions. And the, you know the really weird thing and interesting thing is, it actually changes the brain physically. Physical, physical, I mean more than 20 studies, University of British Columbia found that on average, practiced meditators t tended to have eight distinct brain differences. An increase in tissue in the area of the brain that maintains attention and controlling impulses. Thicker tissue in the area responsible for control and body awareness, controlling impulses, stronger connections between various brain areas, reduction in the region that's linked to negative emotions, sadness and anxiety. What, don't we all kind of want more of that? Uh, reduced activity in the regions responsible for pain. That's what it looks like physically. Peer reviewed studies. Is meditation problem free? Unfortunately not. There, there are problems with meditation too, physical and psychological problems, right? First of all, meditation's become so popular, it's on every corner. And there's a real problem with that because you go to a center, you don't know what you're getting. You could be getting gurus, you could be getting religion mixed with, with meditation, you could be getting all kinds of bunk, right? And a lot of people, once they get into something, they get comfortable, they, then they just go, ah, oh, you know, I'll just practice the meditation, I'll just accept all the BS and they get into it, and that really sucks, you know, and it gives the right kind of meditation a bad name. So in the future, we're gonna create a site that's gonna tell you which, how secular is a meditation technique, how secular is a book, how secular is a teacher, all that kind of stuff. We're working on it, you know, we need funds, all, all that kind of stuff. Other dangers of meditation is, you know, meditation, you're going within the psyche, you know, and you're opening things up. And so it can produce anxiety, grief, fear, anger, emotional, blockages from the past or maybe even made up stuff but you know any good meditation any good meditation teacher will help you get through all that stuff okay why is secular buddhism even needed right why not just meditate okay well you know people can self-identify however they want you can self-identify as a meditator you can self-identify as a secular buddhist you can self-identify as anything you want but practicing secular meditation gives you the right to self-identify as a secular Buddhist. The reason meditation is also so important, it's really the core of, of Buddhism. It, you know, some monks who dedicate their lives to Buddhism, 
after they learn some of the philosophy and all that, they go off and, and they major in meditation. That's, that's like the most important thing because that's the transformative thing. That's the directive. Don't worship other gods, have inner strength, right? So, but for our movement, the most important reason why you should identify as a secular Buddhist if you practice is because if you don't, you're losing us the leverage of transforming the fourth largest religion in the world. You're giving that up. You're just saying, yeah, traditional Buddhism, keep teaching the BS. So why do we need the, revel uh, the, the leverage? Because religion has created a mo monopoly over certain psychological experiences. It's convinced people that psychological experiences that you and I, that all of us have, i.e. things like spirituality, that they only belong to the Christians. They only belong to the Muslims. You're just animals. You don't have spirituality. And it's convinced people that that's true. People truly believe that, that they truly believe that at our core, we atheists are different. And they're just talking about psychology, but you don't have that psychology. You're not good enough. So why does religion try to monopolize like it does? Well, it stands on four pillars. Religion stands on four pillars that it's been monopolizing for thousands of years. So it's beat this into the brains of, of the populations, right? So religion traditionally offers theology. And that's just a fancy word for worldview. And what does their worldview consist of? History, okay, some history. Psychology, yes. Mythology, very much yes, right? We spot it. Rites and rituals. What, is, what do we have? I mean, atheists don't have to believe anything, but our community does embrace reason and science, right? That's superior to theology all day long. That's why we're winning that battle. That pillar, pillar number one, has crumbled, is crumbling. And we just need to keep enforcing that, right? So religion's scared. Religion's like, oh no, we've lost one pillar. Okay, we have three pillars left, right? Okay, we, we're good people. Religious people are supposedly good people. They're better people than everyone else. That's, the, that's what they're trying to say, right? Well, we know that's not true. I mean, we have all true, you know, we're altruistic. Most of you, many of you do great things. I'm the Vice President of the Atheist Alliance of America. We have Atheist Alliance helping the homeless. We do good things. The atheist community does good things. Boom, there goes that pillar. Pillar two, devolving, it's shattered. Religion knows it, right? It's losing that pillar. Third pillar, community. For the longest time, if you weren't part of the religious community, you might have been burned at the stake. Or you were just ostracized and alone. Religion's losing that pillar because we have community. Look at us. We are getting together. We, we're, we're, we're a family. We're the atheist family. And, and, it's, and it's growing. We have that pillar. Religion's losing that pillar. Third pillar, gone. It's standing on one last pillar. And you know what's disappointing? Is we atheists are letting them have the last pillar. We're kind of like, they're saying, well, we have spirituality. We have altered states of consciousness. We have meditation. And we're like, yeah, please continue to, continue to have that because we think they're talking about some wooey stuff, right? But what they're really talking about is psychology. So we're letting them teach psychology disguised as religion and we're not taking it back. And we're, let, we're letting them have a pillar. So now they're going around saying, yeah, yeah, atheism has all that other stuff, but they're empty people, they're sad people. They don't have what we have. They don't have that inner strength. Only God can give you that. Only that only comes from supernaturalism. The other thing, why should the atheist community help secular Buddhists? Because they're secular, they're atheists. <laughs> they need our help to reform traditional Buddhism. In Buddhism, you have a bunch of religious people that don't want secular Buddhism. <laughs> they don't want atheism. Even though a lot of them are atheists, they don't even realize it. So secular Buddhists remind the traditional Buddhists that rites, rituals, gods, gurus, pseudoscience, and the supernatural is not necessary. And secular Buddhists are atheist voters, and we should make them part of our community and help them understand that we're all equal and that they need to stand with us. The challenge that we face is, yes, secular Buddhists are ostracized by traditional Buddhists. Traditional Buddhists don't like secular Buddhists. They're disliked by Christians, Hindus, and Muslims. And they're rejected by the atheist community. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> so we need your help. 
So why is secular Buddhism good for the atheist community, right? Well, there are 500 million Buddhists. 500 million Buddhists. 500 million people that could be here, potentially, right? And Buddhists are supposed to seek the truth. So it's not a far stretch for us to say, yeah, keep being a Buddhist, but know that reason and science should be your guide and not dogma made 2,500 years ago. And many of them, many traditional Buddhists, don't even realize that they're atheists, even though they are, because they don't believe in a creator God. Buddhists, the early Buddhists did not believe in a creator God. The Buddha said there is no creator God. And I think the whole small g gods and stuff, that was just transplant, it's, it's kind of a name thing, but you know, I, got, I get into that later. So they're one of us, and here's the thing. We've seen statistics, we see statistics all the time. How many atheists are there? And I've seen numbers anywhere from zero, <laughs> there's no atheist. Everybody, you know, some people are saying we're all just Christians masquerading as atheists, right? To, to 75%, to, to, you know, 25% atheists, right? 26% atheists. I like that figure. I think it's probably true. A lot of people don't realize they're atheists. But let's say that that's true. Let's say that the highest figure that we've ever seen, say 26% is true, or 25% is true. That still means there are 75% of the world who are theists, supernaturalists, and who believe in BS. And they make our laws based on that. Thank you. Do we need secular Buddhists in our community? Hell yeah. <laughs> secular Buddhism is history in the making. You are witnessing history in the making. This is a reformation, a historical event that school children will read about all over the world for as long as history is taught in classrooms. It's a reformation of an entire religion. And we're sitting on the sidelines doing nothing. As a matter of fact, not doing nothing. We're throwing rocks at the secular Buddhist. This has not happened to Buddhism in 2,500 years. This is the first time that science has been able to reform a religion from the inside out. The closest events to this historical event were in between 1517 and 1648, and also in the 17th century. Anyone know what these events are? Yeah, Protestant Reformation, the Enlightenment. Those were not perfect events, a lot more work to do, you know, but they did some things, right? And I think secular Buddhism is also going to do a lot. But it, it broke up the, the, the monopoly. The, the, the Protestant Reformation broke up the monopoly of the, of the Catholic Church. The Enlightenment um, basically encouraged reason and science versus superstition and submission to authority. It's obviously still a long way to go, but the secular Buddhist Reformation injects what we all know and love and know is true science and reason into Buddhism. Why would we not want that? Why would we not support that? And it's happening without bloodshed because Buddhists aren't really, you know, the kind of people that are going to take out the AK-47, you know? <laughs> so the next step to reforming the religion, and just keep in mind, secular Buddhism is all the things that are good about Buddhism, that we all like about Buddhism, without, based on science and reason, without the BS. So our work, everyone in this room, our work is to find secular Buddhists, let them know they're fellow Buddhists, they belong in our community. And by taking part in this reformation, you are helping to change the fourth largest religion from within. You are part of the history. This has just started. This reformation has just started. A lot of Buddhists don't even know that secular Buddhists exist. You've probably met a Buddhist who said, well, you know, I believe in all the good stuff, but I don't believe in the mumbo jumbo. And they don't say secular Buddhism because they themselves don't even know that it exists. So then what should we do? Volunteer and help. The secular Buddhist reformation, uh, basically the, the Association of Mindfulness Meditation and Secular Buddhism, I'm, I'm the executive director of that organization. The website is ammsb.org. The Atheist Alliance of America is supporting this. American atheists love American atheists, support American atheists, supporting this as well. Welcome secular Buddhists to the atheist community. Support secular Buddhism in teaching traditional Buddhists about reason and science versus faith. Read and recommend the, the next book that we're gonna publish on this subject. It's gonna mirror the talk that I just gave. It's gonna talk about the, the Reformation. And you know what? Try it. Learn a meditation, but make sure it's secular. I, you know, I give a talk 
about the differences of meditation and stuff like that. We're going to be at Dragon Con soon in Atlanta talking about that. Learn about the differences. Don't get into a meditation technique that's wooey, supernatural, religious based. Very bad. So now what I need is, is your ideas, your questions, your doubts. Let's talk about this together. How much time do I have left? Zero? <laughs> Did I talk too long? I'm sorry. All right, questions. If we could get a mic real quick. Debbie has a question. Well, you're not going to be recorded on video, though, if you don't get the mic. That's the problem. Some sources, if you, ever, you guys ever want sources. Okay, hello? So when we go to a class or we go to an instructor, what are some questions we can ask to ascertain whether or not they're going to be Great on the question. secular side of things? Yeah, I mean, one, one thing that I've noticed lately is, is a lot of these traditional Buddhists are getting kind of hip to we're going to ask them some stuff. And so I think you should hit them hard as possible. Ask them if they believe in, in, in rebirth, in reincarnation. I, I mean, and if they try to dodge the question, like, oh, that's not important for you to think about right now. Just start the meditation and we'll, we'll get to, you know, we'll get, when you get wiser, you know, because you're not very wise right now, you're just an atheist. <laughs> Hit them on it. Don't let them, don't let them dodge that question, you know? I mean, that is an unproven thing, and it's, it's supernaturalism, you know? You know, touch on the divas, you know, hey, what about that diva in the scriptures, you know, that spirit, that God that flew through the air, and, you know, this miraculous thing and that miraculous thing. And they're going to say, don't worry about it. You're just an unwise atheist. <laughs> All right. We have, we have one in the back here. Great. Here. Cool. What steps would you recommend that people take to, um, rather than water down atheism, strengthen atheism within Buddhism? Because I, I'm, I guess I'm a, a bit worried that by promoting Buddhism, a lot of people would um, rather identify as that than atheist instead of saying that they overlap. That's a great question. And, and David Silverman and I have talked about this for a long time. And, and you know, or not for a long time, but for, for a little bit. Uh, you know, basically, it's a tough question because people love to just kind of snake away from the whole atheist label. And I wear it proudly. I mean, you know, we are atheists. Secular Buddhists are atheists. And I really do think that we should gather under that one umbrella. And, and that, that's our umbrella. That's our flag, you know. But, you know, it's kind of like really, I think what secular Buddhism is for right now, it's for those people that are going to meditate anyway. So if you're going to meditate anyway, wear the secular Buddhist little pin, you know, while holding the atheist flag so you can change the religion, right? So you can change the fourth largest religion. Otherwise, you're just leaving it to the religionists. And do wear that atheist flag. You know, I, I mean, I think that's the answer. And, you know, David and I have talked about going to, to, to Buddhist conventions and having tables there and stuff like that and, and just letting Buddhists know that they're atheists. I think, I think this is the way in. So, you know, our first job is to get the, the Buddhists to realize they're atheists. Hope that answers. Okay, back here. Hey, thanks for your talk. Uh, will your slides be available online? I believe so. Uh, this presentation is going to be recorded. and It's going to be on the American Atheists website. So feel free to download it, you know, contact me, friend me, email me. Let's get together and do some stuff, guys, girls, everyone. Hey, another one in the back? Yes. I might have uh, misheard one of your points, but I thought one of the negatives that you identified about religion was rituals. And it seems to me that one of the issues that drives people to religion is that there are rituals that bring communities together, or families, or whatever. And I've been at other conferences where I've heard people talk about non-theistic rituals about creating other types of rituals that aren't based about God and similar matters. Did I mishear you or could you speak a little bit about sure, that? Sure, that's a great question. You know, secular Buddhists kind of practice things their own way, each person, each community, you know. So uh, I personally dislike rituals. I think it makes us freaking robots and I hate it, you know. I don't want to be a robot. I want to think, I want to change things up, but that's just me, you know. Someone who likes rituals, I, you know, I'm not going to take it away. If they're, if they're secular rituals, I mean, some of us might have a ritual. I don't know, whatever it is. So, I don't know. Does that answer your question? I, I, I don't recommend it, but 
you know, as long as it's not God-based or something, right? Okay, another one in the back. Here. Okay. Can you clarify what you mean by atheist spirituality? Because absolutely, honestly, that makes no sense to me. And also, yeah. meditation is meditation. It, so secular meditation to me sounds but, like secular sandwich making. No, I, I love that you, that you asked this question. Okay, because look, you know, I, I've traveled around the world uh, to more than 80 countries studying all the different religions before I became an atheist, before I realized I was an atheist, right? And I've, I've partaken in pretty much as many rituals and, you know, spiritual practices as there are out there. And one thing that I noticed when I came out of that whatever is I was in, in that altered state of consciousness that you feel when you meditate, right? And what did the religionists try to do? They, they said, you know, that state that you're in right now, that's supernaturalism, that's supernatural. You're experiencing the woo, and you're in touch with God, or this, or that, or demons, or you know, whatever, right? And they said, and that's spirituality, that's the cornerstone of what spirituality is. So what, what we're trying to remind people here now is that religion doesn't, monopolize doesn't own that psychological state of being it's a psychological state of being and religion has tried to monopolize it and call it its own and we're letting them we're letting we're allowing religion to say that only religious people have something have this psychological state called spirituality and then we don't we're bereft of it we're empty we're just atheists we're taking this word back some of you, if you don't want to take this word back with me, you don't have to. I'm taking it back. I'm not going to let religion own this word anymore. Uh, here to the right. Hi. Um, I'm actually uh, an amputee, and I found that uh, mindfulness meditation does wonders for uh, phantom pain. And in my community, a lot of people are looking for advice, and they don't want to go to medication. And I don't want to tell people not to do medication, do what, they, do what works. But in the side effect that you had said, you know, with the trauma, a lot of these people are dealing with trauma and are reluctant to send them to um, a meditation center. Yeah. Is there any resources for uh, psychologists who are actually trained in um, meditation guidance in that way? Yeah, we're, we're building this, and I need your help with this. You know, we need funds, we need people, you know, we need, you know, we, we need everything that, that a new movement needs. We, we want to put together a resource system where you can go online and we rate it and it says this is how secular they are so you know what you're getting into that's so important and that's going to be our next step so yeah love it i found that religionists also try to claim love is coming from god yeah when you look around the world when i look around the world i, I see that we love because we're human dogs love because they're also mammals so that we can grow this out of our humanity rather than some God telling it we're spiritual or we love. So it's, it, it makes me more of a human and more recognizing who I am. Right on. Who, who we all are. Right on, I love it. Yeah, it's, it's so sad, you know, I mean, just, you know, religion has really monopolized human psychological traits and experiences, right? They have monopolized and stolen this from every one of us in this room. And a lot of times we're just sitting there going, yeah, religion to take that, it's yours. All right. Thank you, everyone. Great to, great to be here.